Hey guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this super cute fabric caddy. This is great for your sewing and your scrapbooking or whatever you want to put in it. Now with all my tutorials you will find a blog post which will be linked below as well as the information icon. Over there you will find the measurements for this caddy as well as a smaller version, more photos, and links for any of the products I use. If you're not already subscribed, I would love it if you join the community and also smash that like button as the kids like to say. Okay, so let's get started. So I will be using a canvas fabric for this tutorial. I got this over at Hobby Lobby. It's a thicker fabric and you might want to use a thicker fabric for this type of project, but if you want to do cotton, you're just going to need some heavy duty interfacing. I still have chosen to do interfacing for this project. I'm going to be using a product called Peltex. It's really stiff, I'll show it to you in a minute. I'm just running through all the pieces, but if you go over to the blog post, you'll know exactly what to cut out. Now you will notice that the outer pockets will have two pieces for each side, and the one piece is actually going to be a little bit smaller, and then we'll have a nice long piece for our strapping. So this is that Peltex I was talking about. This is a sew-in version, so it doesn't have any glue on it. You can get a version that has glue, but I think it's a little bit more money. Or you can use a fusible fleece or a heavyweight interfacing. So it's totally up to you what you want to use. So the first thing we're going to do is work on our outer pocket. So we're gonna take the main fabric of the outer pocket and the lining piece of our pocket and we're going to put those with the right size together. We're going to line up one of the long edges and as you can see the outer fabric is a little bit shorter than the lining fabric. You'll see shortly why this is but we're actually going to give it the illusion of having a binded edge and the reason why I'm doing this is because the main fabric of the pockets is the same fabric as the you know actual body of the caddy and this will just give it some differentiation if that makes sense just so that you can see where the pocket is and it's just a nice little accent so we're just going to turn that with the right sides out and then we'll line up the bottom right edges and then you'll see that that little edge will just appear and we're just going to give that a press I did the other side of the caddy, the two pocket pieces off camera, but again, we're gonna do the same thing with the ironing. So making sure that everything is nice and lined up. And this is how it will appear. It almost looks like it has a binded edge, but without all the hassle because I don't enjoy binding. <laughs> so then we're just gonna do a top stitch right along the outer fabric. So just a little bit right next to that seam and then that'll just give it a nice and polished look. So at this point, we're just mirroring exactly what we're doing to both sides of the caddy, but you'll see that this can be customized so easily, and I'm going to be making different size pockets wherever I can, and if you already have your tools in mind, you can sort of just plan out what you want, where you want. So next, we're gonna take one of the outer fabrics and then we'll take that pocket piece and lay that on top, lining up the bottom edge. You're gonna to wanna to try to make sure this is as straight as possible because then you'll, you'll be able to see that later on when you're finished your bag if your pockets aren't exactly straight. So now I'm just gonna get some colored chalk and a ruler and we're gonna place some markings. We're gonna measure up from the bottom about three and a half inches and just draw a guideline. And then we're gonna create our pockets. We're gonna make our pockets start at that line that we drew. And the first pocket is going to be three and a half inches. And the last pocket is going to be three and a half inches. Those are gonna be the ones that you don't really want to um, change, just because those are gonna be on the sides of your bag. But the ones in between, you can totally customize to any size you like. So if you're going to be putting pens or markers, then I would do about a one inch gap. If you're gonna put scissors or rotary cutters, then I would do a two to three inch gap. I actually didn't show it, but the Peltex is actually underneath that outer fabric. So it's the Peltex, the outer fabric, and then that pocket on top. So because there's so many layers, um, I do recommend sewing your pockets from that guideline up just because if you start at the top of your pocket 
it might end up kind of puckering by the time you get down to that seam. You could avoid this by using a walking foot, that would help a lot, but I'm just too lazy so I just didn't. <laughs> okay, so here are my two panels completed. My second panel I chose to put a lot more little slots and I did this because I predict that my daughter's probably going to steal it for her art supplies, so she'll probably stick her markers in there. So next we're going to actually trim off the top half inch of my Peltex. And this next step is just so that you can reduce the amount of headaches when you go to assemble your whole bag. If you want to actually just trim off the half inch of your, you know, interfacing or whatever before you get there, you can do that. If you don't think that it's going to be a problem, you can just leave it. But I imagine that the Peltex is going to give me a problem if I leave it all the way up there when I do go to hem the top of this bag. So I just took off a half inch and then I pressed my fabric over it. I'm just pressing it now because it will be a lot more difficult once the bag is basically assembled. So I'm going to take the lining fabric and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hem the one of the long sides a half inch. Okay, so next we're going to take our two outer panels and we're going to put those with the right sides together. We're going to try to line up the side pocket pieces. If you find that your overall pieces are not quite squared up, you could take them over to your cutting mat and just square up your rectangle all around so that is all the same size. But we're just going to use some clips to do this. When you're using such heavy duty interfacing such as Peltex, um, the pins just won't work. And I'll have a link to the clips that I use over at the blog post. So after you're done that, then you're just going to sew down the one side, down the bottom, and up the other side. And I'm going to be using a half inch seam allowance for this step. I'm actually going to be starting at the bottom of the bag and sewing up the one short side. The reason why I did this was, again, same with that little pocket on the side. I don't want it to pucker. And then after I just took it out and I went back to that corner and sewed down the long edge and up the other side. And like I said before, you could totally avoid this if you just put the walking foot on. <laughs> I do have a tutorial on walking feet and I can leave that in the information icon if you have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> so after that, you can take your lining pieces, put those with the right sides together and then do the same thing, sewing up the short side, down one long side and down the other short side. If you wanted to have pockets on the inside of your bag, you could actually take those outer panels and repeat those two more times and that just create the inside as the same as the outside. So that's totally up to you. I don't have enough fabric to do that. <laughs> so here is how the outer is looking. I'm just taking a peek on the inside to make sure that all of my seams are perfect and I didn't accidentally catch all the fabric. And now we're going to corner off our corners. For this step, you're just going to push your fingers into the corner and then push the side seam down to line up with the bottom seam. Because we did that seam a while ago that was three and a half inches up, we actually created a guideline for this next step. So you're just going to sew along that sewn, that like seam that we created and that's like you don't have to measure it out or um, draw a line. <laughs> but you're going to have to do that if you have just a regular plain lining like I did. And that will be six inches from side to side. So when you're doing it, you want to line up your ruler and make sure that it is three inches right in the middle. I put a pin there just to make sure that those seams are lining up and then when you go to take your bag out of the machine and you look at your seam, um, it should line up perfect. So now I'm just going to sew down that guide seam that we have here 
It does get a little bulky with the Peltex, um, but I didn't change my needle and I'm just using a regular machine, so it wasn't too bad. I did do a couple passes over that um, center seam just because, well, just to give it some more reinforcement, I guess. <laughs> And then we'll do the lining the same way. And then we're going to cut off the excess. Like I said, it can get a little tough in that center seam there. And then I'm just going to kind of carve away as much of the interfacing as possible just so that it's not too bulky at the bottom of the bag. We want to make sure that our lining fits in nicely and kind of tucks into those corners. And then we cut off that excess on the lining as well. Next, we're going to start working on the strap. So I'm actually going to be using you as little guinea pigs today because I'm making a strap that I've never made before. So I'm gonna take that strip of fabric and I'm going to fold it in half. I'm making a really long strap just because I'm gonna end up cutting it up. So instead of having two separate ones, I just like to do a big long one and then just cut it to size. So once we've pressed it in half, then we're just going to open it up and then press the raw edges towards the center. And then after we just fold it in half again, and then we have our strap. We're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew down both edges with a top stitch that will just close up our strap as well as make it look like a strap. So I hope you're enjoying the tutorial so far. If you are, I hope you give it a thumbs up and of course subscribe to the channel and share this with your friends. Share it on Pinterest, on all your sewing groups. This really helps support my channel as well as keeps free tutorials coming your way. Okay, so once we're done that, we're going to now get to the experimenting part where I'm going to cut my little straps down to size. I think I did like 10 to 12 inches. Um, and then I'm going to actually take one of the straps and then I'm going to fold it in half again, but only in the center. I've seen straps like this before, so it's not like I, I invented it. Um, but I just measured up about three inches from both sides or both ends. And then I just folded the fabric up until those points. So I made little markings there. And then I'm just going to sew that in half starting at the markings and then ending at the marking so not all the way and then that's just gonna make a little I don't know just a, a different handle I guess <laughs> I like how it turned out and some people will add uh, a thin rope on the center so maybe if you wanted to do that then you would just cut a wider piece but there definitely wasn't room for me to slip a piece of rope in there Okay, so now we can take the outer of our bag and we're gonna flip that right sides out. It's a little stiff. I'm just gonna poke out your corners really good. And then at this point, because we did that ironing of the hem a long time ago, this is gonna be so much easier. So I just placed the lining on the inside, making sure the wrong side of the lining is touching the wrong side of the bag. And now I'm just going to line up the edge all the way around. We're gonna, of course, start at the seams to make sure that those are nice and lined up. And we'll just use our clips to tack it in place every inch or so. And then once I've done the clipping, then I will place my straps where I want them to go. And I think I did, so if you're calling it the corner of the bag, I did the straps about an inch and a half away from each corner on, on the side. And with this type of handle, I made sure that that sort of folded edge is towards the, the bag. If that makes sense. So now we're just going to do that top stitch all the way around the edge of the bag, which will secure the lining to the outer fabric as well as securing those straps in place. 
and I did take the little arm off of my machine to help get it over top. And then once you're done this, then you're pretty much done. So I love how this bag turned out. Um, if I made this again, I would probably use another layer of Peltex. I did make this bag with layers of fusible fleece on all the pieces. Um, I thought that worked out quite well. If you're going to use a cotton fabric, I would for sure use a Peltex type material or a heavyweight interfacing just because the the cotton might not hold up, especially with the with the weight of your tools and things inside the little pockets. But the canvas and the Peltex worked quite well, so I'm pretty happy with it and I think it turned out super cute. So now I'm just going to iron the creases onto the sides and the bottom just to make it nice and boxy. It'll help, you know, give it some shape. And then that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be alerted of new and future tutorials. And I do have tutorials on Tuesdays and Fridays. So of course, keep those, you know, keep that in mind so that you can be ready. And yeah, over at the Facebook group, I do give little spoilers and teasers so you can see what I've been working on. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next tutorial. Bye guys.